The sea-based ballistic missile, fired from an unknown location, medium range, reliable. The land-based ballistic missile fired from a protected, known location. Long range, reliable. Two weapons capable of reaching strategic targets. Two weapons possessing unique advantages, but subject to the constraints and enemy countermeasures that a third deterrent can overcome. The man-bomber. Operationally versatile, maneuverable, a known weapon that has reached a high state of sophistication but which still has to overfly its target and lay down bombs in the long-established manner. A weapon system that is becoming increasingly vulnerable to improve surface-to-air missiles. To be an effective arm, the man-bomber must have new armament an attack missile system which permits the bomber to stand off from the target. SRAM, the short-range attack missile, provides standoff attack capability for the B-52 G and H and the FB-111. possesses a dual mission capability. It can be used as a direct attack weapon. In this role, the carrier aircraft launches SRAM at primary targets a safe distance beyond enemy defenses. In its other role, SRAM is used first for defense suppression. This allows the man-bomber deeper penetration into enemy territory. Remaining SRAMs and lay-down bombs are then used against prime targets. The total SRAM system consists of the missile, carrier aircraft equipment, aerospace ground equipment, personnel, training equipment, and technical data. The short-range attack missile presents a threat that belies its physical size, 14 feet long, slightly more than 17 and a half inches in diameter, weighing just over 2,200 pounds. Consisting of an impact fuse, back up to the primary fusing system, the payload section, a nuclear warhead developed by the Atomic Energy Commission, an electronic section for missile guidance and control, consisting of an inertial system with computer, autopilot, and terrain clearance radar for propulsion, a unique two-pulse solid propellant rocket motor. Flight controls, electrohydraulic, three fins that provide aerodynamic control of the missile in response to signals from the guidance section. 14 feet long and almost 16 feet long with a tail cone that is used for most external carriage positions to reduce aerodynamic drag. Full production of the SRAM system began in 1971, following a highly successful development and testing program. The production effort involved the coordination of almost 2,000 subcontractors and suppliers located in 39 states. A combined industry and Air Force endeavor resulting in an effective, reliable weapon system. In fact, SRAM has consistently exceeded design and performance specifications and predictions. The first missile was delivered less than a year and a half after the start of full production. Since that time, missile deliveries have been on schedule. Deployment of SRAM into the Strategic Air Command is also proceeding on schedule. Air Force personnel perform the majority of wing activation tasks following installation of the integrated maintenance facility and initial flight hardware by the contractor.
Air Force personnel inspect and check out the missiles as they are received. Following checkout, the operational or training payload is installed. Installation of the payload can be done either in the integrated maintenance facility or on the flight line. The missiles are loaded onto pylons or a rotary launcher. The launchers are tested prior to loading and installation on the airplane. From design to production, testing and deployment. SRAM is a new concept in the neutralization of strategic targets and the suppression of enemy defenses. Used on the B-52G and H, the FB-111, and eventually the B-1 airplanes, SRAM improves the chance of mission success and airplane survival. An airplane operating on the deck in enemy territory is more difficult to detect and defend against. One of SRAM's several attributes is its ability to follow a terrain clearance flight path, flying in ground clutter to hinder radar detection. SRAM's supersonic speed, its small size and low radar reflectivity make tracking and interception virtually impossible. SRAM requires no monitoring or testing during ground alert and does not increase aircraft reaction time. The system is activated after the carrier is airborne. Pre-programmed with targeting information before takeoff, enablement and launching of the nuclear arm SRAM requires minimal action by the air crew. In the normal mode, the SRAM system with its rapid firing, multiple missile launching capability operates automatically. But it can be reprogrammed by the flight crew at any time prior to launch to strike unexpected or higher priority targets. After being launched, the missile can follow a high or low flight profile and turn to strike targets in any direction from the launching airplane. Versatile and reliable, SRAM is an effective deterrent, a system for peace. SRAM gives new impact, new meaning to the nation's current and planned manned strategic bomber force. It is one more reason for confidence in our country's defense posture, for faith in the future as we work for peace. <laughs>